Um, all right. Let's talk about some individual card designs. Yeah, bonuses. Bonuses. We have... I know Tommy has been itching for this. I think Tommy maybe <laughs> wishes that the whole thing was individual card design. <laughs> but you, you can... You cards. You can go first, Tommy. So I will say my favorite card in the whole set... And everyone listening will be disappointed. But my favorite card in the whole set is Indomitable Will, which ah. is one in a white for a 2-1 flash aura that gives the enchanted creature plus one, plus two. And I will say the reason why is that white is the color of all colors that most uses combat tricks. Historically, it was green, but green is the color that doesn't need combat tricks at all. Uh, because its creatures are big enough to survive combat anyway, but white is the color that's attacking little creatures into big creatures that need some way to win. And white has historically had very few varieties of combat trick. It's really difficult to come up with like two different white combat tricks for an aggressive deck. Yes. It's really nice to have this space, which was originally in original Theros, this card was green and gave plus two, plus two, and cost three mana. Uh, but it makes way more sense in white, because white needs this. So this is white doing something, I mean, new as a stretch, because uh, there's like feet of resistance and other things to do with counters. But this gives white something that I think white could do regularly as variations on this that would play well. Uh, and yeah. so that that was my like thing that I saw that made me smile the most out of the whole set. You realize it's a reprint, right? It is not a reprint. It is a reprint from Chandler. for Magic Origins. Oh, it is! Oh my God, it is! Yeah, wow, no, reprint. I totally did not realize it was a reprint. But well, the... <laughs> you still like it. I still yeah. like it. Just because it's a reprint does not mean like they clearly recognized this is a thing that should yeah. exist in this set. That's still. They probably what they probably did was they designed it and they went wait this is a reprint you know what they mean and, <laughs> that's very possible yeah and that happens what? you know yeah um, if you if you I, tune the numbers at all the design is completely different yeah, so yeah. yeah yeah and I agree I I think one of the things that I, I don't know this is again just hot take but white should get giant growth the fact that white is limited to only having a ceiling of like plus two on its power is really limiting to white combat tricks and it needs more. You know, white might not need the power side of it more, but it really needs to be able to buff toughness. And that often goes hand in hand with power because they really don't like, um, you know, flop, flip flopped uh, bonuses sometimes on tricks. And the fact that they could jump up the power better would be better for the white smaller creatures. You know? I, I want plus two plus creatures. three on, on a like it's not giant growth because giant growth is so iconic. Yeah. But it, it needs something on its one mana tricks other than just indestructible if you do the thing the set cares about yeah. uh, in addition right. to plus two, plus two. Kind of like how they, they finally gave them the four, four for five at common. I think it's just the same principle. Yeah, the, the plus two, plus four was fine. That used to be the standard, although I didn't like that they always printed it in the same set with Titanic growth. So it was just sort of like a uh -huh. joke. Uh, but yeah. the Okay. Uh, Trevor, do you have a design? Um, actually, can I say one more thing about that one? Yes. Uh, the one thing I want to say was, I also think this is good evidence of the weirdness of the fact that they don't do this design more often. Like, it's very clear that they only whip out the flash enchantment technology when an enchantment set is happening, right? Hmm. And you see it in Ikoria, and you see it in Eldraine because they're right next to Theros. But, like, they're very weirdly hesitant to do flash buffs, except when it's, like, absolutely necessary to make something work like in sentinel's mark it has addendum so obviously it needs flash you know i think very rarely do they actually do it i think it's because it's win more like if you play this you probably got somebody right like you're getting somebody you're blowing them out somehow and then your creature is also bigger the following turn yeah i get i get that they don't do it frequently for that reason but they do get plus one plus one counters on instance as well and i think like that's true you know it, it's it's one of those things that like I feel like we could see it more often. I, I think that yeah. if you're going to have win more on anything, an aura is probably the best place for it. You know what I mean? That's so true. So I, I, I think it's one of those things that to me, it kind of has the sensation of they know they can do it and they hold it back for enchantment sets and things around them when they don't need to, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. So my topic, uh, I actually want to talk not just about individual card designs, although I was going to pick um, a few, but or one. 
but I wanted to talk about the blue-red archetype in Theros Beyond Death, which was blue-red cast spells on your opponent's turn, which is interesting. Uh, specifically, I wanted to talk about the card, um, going with the red card, Arena Trickster, uh, which whenever you cast your first spell during each opponent's turn, it gets a plus one, plus one counter, and it's a three and a red for a three, three. This is one of those things that, like, actually, you, I, I won't even say it first off the bat. I'm curious. What do you two think about the blue-red archetype in the set being cast spells on an opponent's turn? I mean, I liked it. Um, I didn't end up drafting it that often because the bots, like, wouldn't let you <laughs> on Arena. But uh, I, I think it, it's a nice... It's orthogonal to the normal uh, sorceries and instants um, uh, spell slinging archetype that we get, where if, if you're playing lots of instants, you can also play them on their turn. You know what I mean? And um, it tells players to do something a little bit different with their cards. It teaches players if you have instants, make a point of doing it on your opponent's turn. Like you can do that, like save it to the last possible moment for for, for the bonus. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I liked it. I feel like it did a lot of good things. It didn't necessarily have to be in this set, but I, I liked it. So historically, this has been a blue-black mechanic, mm -hmm. and I think I more buy it as a blue-black mechanic than a blue-red mechanic, but I, I don't like... It's obviously blue, because blue yeah. is the play things on other people's turns color. Red would not even, I think, have been my next choice after black if one were to do this. But I, it worked, I think. Yeah. Um, that, that's exactly what I was expecting you to say, actually, Tommy. Uh, and I'm happy to hear you say those things, Carl, because that's actually a lot of the things I was going to say. I have a weird obsession with the ability of archetypes to teach things. And I'm starting to come around on that a little bit of maybe I'm a little too obsessed with it. But I really like the idea of archetypes that naturally nudge players into learning a couple lessons. And I think casting instants on opponents' turns is a good thing. The understanding that you can do that is a good thing. It's one of the things that separates magic from other card games, so it's good to highlight that. Oh, that's true. Yeah, and I do think that this is odd. I One of the things that I'm surprised, uh, I don't think Tommy picked up on it, but um, Black, right before the set, got upgraded to having flash secondary. It, it, it is now the blue-black mechanic is flash now. And then the very next set, I think, is uh, Throne of Eldraine, and then they do this set, and it's blue-red instead of blue-black. And it's so interesting because you'd think they'd want to highlight that black gets this now, but they don't. And then in Ikoria, it's blue black again because they had they had to make it blue black again because they needed to care about keywords and that's the keyword for flash. So it's interesting that they decided to do it for red for one set in between the two. Do I like it or dislike it? I like it and dislike it at the same time. Um, one of the things that's tricky to me is red is currently characterized as a color that is very reckless and does things immediately instants are the exact opposite of that instance you want to save them and you want to hold on to them until a good time to use them and you typically don't run them out asap and this one tells you do not run it out asap because it doesn't even want you to cast on your turn it only but but it does want turn. you to cast it like you're gonna lose your bonus if you don't do it on that next turn which is why i think it can still work in red like but these bonuses are not things that are typically time limited uh they typically are things that are patient right like yes well you lose time. your you lose your window if you don't do it like you're not rewarded to hold up your counter spell until until they cast something they want you to cast a combat trick on their turn or to save your removal spell for their turn like things that you would be doing on your main step during your turn to to just wait and if you don't do it then you, you miss out and that does feel red to me I think it's an extension of red. I think that the ability, I, I agree that that window of opportunity that you describe is a little reddish. Like this wants you to be casting a, a spell on each opponent's turn, every one of their turns, which does feel a little more red, but it's extending the space of red. And I think that's a good thing. I think that red deserves to not be the color of recklessly and immediately doing things 
and only doing that, right? I think red is allowed to think ahead a little bit and is allowed to hold back a little bit. And I think what you've described of, I want to hold back until your turn, but I want to do something every one of your turns. I think that is a red way to handle yeah. thinking ahead, right? And I think that is a red way to handle patience in that it's, it's like that little kid who's thrumming with energy and is struggling to contain it and is going to explode any moment, but they are still holding on just for long enough. You know what I mean? And it's weird. I think it's a very odd choice for red because red only gets this with instance and with the enchantments that have flash. Red does not get flash very often. And I don't think it got it on a single red card, like creature card in the set. And that makes it feel different than the blue cards, which tend to have flash for this instead. And uh, they, focus a little more on the creature half of the equation and the enchantment half of the equation to make the two halves of the archetype feel different, mm -hmm. which is cool. I think uh, it's, again, weird spot for it. I think they did it because of the omens happening to have flash. And yeah, that does they, help. They, they and the flash they auras. Flash auras too, exactly. They're like, hey, we're going to have to do a lot of flash for the set. Maybe we can do something about that. And then they looked at blue-black and thought they might too, feel too similar as two halves of the archetype and so on. But... Um, it's odd. It, it is an interesting oddity, and I just wanted to kind of highlight that it's both really cool for red and very unusual for red, and I think that's a good thing in the end, but it just has that weird tension to it. Yeah. Cool. Um, the, the card I want to talk about was Sweet Oblivion, and this, I think, is my favorite card in the set. It's uh, an escape card it just mills them, mills any player four, and then the escape three and a blue to an exile four cards. And I think this has a lot of lenticular design because um, you see this card and you're like, oh, it's a mill card. You just mill them with it. But to, to re replay it, you actually need to be milling yourself. And it perfectly allows you to just mill your whole deck with Sweet Oblivion because it puts four cards into your yard. If they're not the cards you're looking for, you can use it to cast it again later. But then, if it gets to a point where you've gotten all the resources you need from your graveyard, you can then turn it into a win condition instead and start targeting them. It's a very interesting design with Escape in particular because Escape is about recursion and doing the same thing over and over again. And one way that this design sings is that you don't want to do the same thing over and over again. You want to fuel yourself a little bit so you can cast it on them or and hold it back until you know you can win like you've got a bunch of cards in your yard and you have eight mana and you can mill them eight um or you know if you're all out mill you can just start milling them aggressively so i i really like the design of that card i think it does uh, really interesting things with the space of escape and yeah i just like how lenticular it is and it, it's nice like this can be kind of a dirtly format because they want you to be trading a lot and have creatures that you're replaying a lot and you have the mana and the cards in your yard to do that. Um, and so sometimes I would draft a really slow deck that just gained lots of life and gummed up the board and I would just win with Sweet Oblivion, which was very satisfying uh, from a draft perspective. So yeah, that's mine. Tommy, your turn. I want to talk about Thrix, the Sudden Storm. Ooh. Uh, so I'm going to read this in a weird order, but I'm going to start with the ability spells you cast with converted mana cost five or greater cost one less to cast and can't be countered. And so I want to think about, okay, what kind of card do I want that to be on? What do I want the mana cost of that card to be? Well, I'd say if you want it to play it on curve and you want that ability to be relevant, then you'd need this to cast cost three because you need to play it on three play a land have four lands and then play your five drop that would have been ideal but what does it actually cost it actually costs five and it helps you play five drops uh which is already a little weird uh but then you add on the fact that it has flash for reasons uh, and sort of like the thing you read when you look at the can't be countered and the flash 
is you think, okay, I'm supposed to play this in response to them countering one of my five drops. Oh, no. Except there's no way you can possibly do that because it costs five and you're playing a five drop, so that doesn't really make sense. But then on top of all of that, which all... It's also a four five flyer for five mana. And so I feel like at the point where you're printing a five mana four or five flyer with flash, it just doesn't matter what the other ability does because every five mana four or five flyer, whether it has flash or not, is the same magic card because it just you play it and either they kill it or you kill them. So I feel like they had this ability and they had some potential. But then they put the pieces together in such a way that this has become a card where it has this line of text that's just never going to matter. And the line of text that's never going to matter is the only interesting thing about the card. Hmm. So th these are the nitty gritty things that I, I pick up on, on there that I complain about on these cards. But I, I, I want this to cost three mana and have different stats and these abilities, and then it would be way more interesting. Yeah, just more like internally consistent, really, like to help itself succeed. Clearly, it was a companion for Ikoria, so it had to cost converted mana cost five. I guess. <laughs> oh, no. oh no. Yeah, it's 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 an oddball. I, I Tommy talked about this to me in the past, and I I explained a bit about the flash and all that. I think that stuff makes sense, but yeah, it being a four or five flyer, like I. I if it was smaller, you would be more incentivized to use the ability, which is the fun part of the card. But now it's just like beat them in the face. So the fun part of the card is kind of trinket text. Hmm. Yeah, yeah Block that's fair. Block their 4-4 four four with it by flashing it in and then beat them in the face. Yeah, I mean, that's like, how it plays in Limited. That's what it does. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I have a hard time imagining this being good in Constructed. Like, maybe. It's an EDH card, I think. Uh Oh, yeah, I guess. Kind of. It's. I think that's what it's meant to be doing. It's. Uh, I think it's fun. I. It's going to be in my Sphinx deck because Sphinxes love it. But mm. you know. All right, Trevor. Do you have a card? Uh, yeah, Hateful Eidolon. Uh, Ooh, I was going to pick that it's one. It's a one mana enchantment creature spirit, life link. Whenever an enchanted creature dies, draw a card for each aura you control that was attached to it. It's a one power, two toughness. It's your boy, Trevor Tragedy, and I say this would have been in my Greek Tragedy set. Because <laughs> this cares about auras in a way that is compatible with original Theros, but you see, it also cares about auras in a way that sells tragedy. Now, the white-black archetype, which is auras, works with both pacifism and dead weight, as well as heroic auras. So the cool, ironic twist, which dramatic tragic irony is also part of greek tragedy is that now the very mechanisms of heroic are used for tragedy and i think that would have been really cool i like this card a lot it, it and uh dawn of angel both have a really cool way of caring about auras that is unique which hits upon the thing that you were saying that we needed to care about auras and enchantments in a way that was unique to auras and enchantments yeah this is a way that's unique to it and it's a way that the original Theros did not explore, which is the ability to enchant your opponent's creatures. Bestow did that really weird cycle that nobody liked, but this one does it in a way that actively rewards you for casting the auras you already wanted to be casting, which is stuff like dead weight and pacifism, the auras that are usually more acceptable because they removal instead of risky bonuses. And I think the fact that it can interface with both is a really good transition point to a thing that we're losing you, Trevor. Oh, did you lose me a lot for that? Just a little bit at the end. Okay. Where did you start losing me? Um, Like one sentence, maybe. Half a sentence at the end. So we're probably fine. Yeah, that was probably... Anyway, I do that a lot, so no worries. Yeah. Um, I was going to say the same thing about it making you care about enchantments, uh, behaving the way that enchantments behave. Um, so I like that. Okay, so I'm going to tell you a line of text. Um, this card exiles cards from a graveyard. And when you do it, uh, you gain two life and your opponent loses two life. What color is this card? It sounds very black, but I'm guessing it's not black. Yeah, it, maybe I, it was a little too leading there. Um, it's red-green, obviously, because... Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know the the 
the icon of the red green color combination in the pantheon <laughs> of of devotion uh, the color matters mechanic uh, gods so yeah i was like oh cool it makes sense that there is a god that was locked up with the titans that needed to be replaced like they're tying up loose ends awesome new character Okay, she looks kind of weird. Uh, what's her deal? Destiny. Okay, how's Red Green Destiny? There's a whole blogatog, you know, month long argument about that. But then just what she does does not feel red green at all. Um, it, it just feels like a very tortured way of them being like, how can Red Green care about the graveyard? Well, maybe if they have this modular thing where they care about what you exile and it might give you mana, or it could, you know, do two things that happen when you put red and green together, which is dealing damage and green can gain life. And hey, look, those mirror each other. I don't know. I um, So all that logic is logical and it, it makes sense uh, in pieces, but there's no way that... I, I just think this is a horrible red-green god design because it doesn't feel red-green at all. And anytime it was played against me or I played with it in, in draft, is like, oh, you have the mono-black finisher uh, creature that is actually just red green, you know. Uh, I I just really dislike how that design came together. There, it feels like they're breaking the pie in the way that custom magic designers do, where it's like, oh, if this color can do this thing, that color can do this other thing. If you put them together, it can do something that neither color uh, should be able to do by itself. Uh, yeah. It feels similarly. I think this started as just them saying again, like this is the enchantment set. What's an what's an iconic enchantment? Oh, sulfuric vortex. We need to print a sulfuric vortex. Oh, we can't plant a mono red sulfuric vortex. That's too good. And I think R and D for many many years has had this bizarre notion that red green wants to be an aggressive color pair, even though. I don't know that red green has ever been an aggressive color pair, but if you you look at the mechanics they try and put in red green. Yeah. They, they really want it. They want red green aggro to happen. And so I think this was their way of saying, like, well, maybe this way we can make red green aggro happen. Uh, mm. That's my. Aggro card? Of course it's an aggro card. It's, it's a three minute deal two damage to everyone. It, it's Sulfuric Vortex. It doesn't get any more aggro than Sulfuric Vortex. I don't know. If but, I agree. but it uh, can, can also ramp you. But the problem is, when are you <laughs> ramping with it? I don't know. <laughs> I like, don't, it, I don't necess- Sorry. if you have cards in your graveyard already, are you likely to need ramp? I don't know. Like, so, depending on what's in your hand, yes. But I, I'm... Your graveyard. That's true. A graveyard. That's true. In fact, I believe the intent is to exile your opponent's stuff. Yeah, but if you want to build around this, like, you want to make sure you have ways to get oh, stuff yeah. into your yard, right? But, so, but in practice... Idea. Yeah, the idea of the card is that she is removing the possibility of escape. You see. So, yeah, but there's uh, like 12 cards that already do that in this set. Yeah, I know. It's, yeah. it's, it's odd. I, okay. I, I, uh, I, I, I'm going to be the odd boy out. I, I think here, I think what you're saying about color mismatch is okay. You're talking about individual single colors. Blue should not destroy creature because it can bounce a creature to the mill. But blue, black can destroy creatures right and white red gets war leaders helix even though black also gets war leaders helix because white can gain life and red can deal damage you'll notice uh if you had said you gain two life and clothis or and this deals two damage it wouldn't have felt as black anymore because in black you deal the damage then you steal the life so they very deliberately wrote it this way, even though it's the opposite order of the mana symbols. And, and that makes me more mad because it means that yeah. they knew it. Like they, they knew did. if you just change the order it's written in, but it still does the same thing, that doesn't make it okay. <laughs> that, I... Like this is one of the most iconic things that black does. They have it in every set, almost, you know, often a common, some kind of life steal, yeah. life leeching thing. And Saying something that's emblematic of the red-green color combination can do that every turn, uh, you know, and not just like a small amount. It's, it's you're not draining for one, but for two. Like there's very iconic black cards that do this. Uh, I I really white, don't like I that. I would be so much happier with I that. Agree it's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I would agree, it's iconic black. It's also iconic red white. Yeah. Does it really need to also be red green? I. 
Yeah, yeah I, exactly. It's just mud. I'm not saying I like it in red green. I'm saying that it's not a color pie viol- violation. It's just it's really freaking weird. And okay, that's fair. Not a violation, time, except yeah. in feel, which yeah, in some exactly. ways is more important. In final sensation, it's weird. In red white, it works because the flavor is very clear as well. Like it's inspiring damage. When when it's lightning helix, it's it's inspiring. War leader helix is better, I think, because. You deal the damn thing, and then yay, your army's happy, all that stuff, you know. Um, in this case, it's weird. Uh, I agree, I don't like it. To me, I'm not exactly a fantastic, you know, constructed player or anything. But to me, this doesn't like an aggro deck. Uh, I can be used for aggro, but the gaining of mana, the life, and the damage to me that reads as I am establishing a clock. If I can do this ten times, I win ideally, and I am adding some distance for you to beat me, right? This is making it harder for you to become the beatdown. And I can gain some mana to be able to cast some other things, I guess. I agree that part's really weird. Um, But I feel like this is meant to be an inevitable feeling. I think it's meant to feel like I am inevitably winning, you are inevitably losing, and that's kind of meant to feel like this. The the classic red-green feel. Right. It's a No. Either it's aggro. Which it's white black. I don't know. Or it's white black or red white e- or whatever. Even, it, even if you first Destiny. Pick Spheric Vortex, what deck are you drafting? <laughs> See, I think in this case, it, it's not meant for draft. I think it's meant to feel like a different direction for red green. It's meant to be a more inexorable red green. I don't know. I'm You're very generous. generous <laughs> here. Very yeah. generous here. I think the final part, to be clear. But I think it was intended to portray a different dimension of red green than we typically get. I That's think true. Everything about her feels show, different. It's, I think it's meant to. I think it's meant to. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I, yeah. I, I agree. 